is how we achieve uh, the entry speed into a corner or a bend. And the objective, of course, is to negotiate this curve and exit it in total safety. Now, on the approach to this corner, you've checked your mirror, you've considered the best position for you to be on the road, which is invariably close to the white line in the centre of the carriageway for your best line of vision through the curve. We look across the near side apex of the bend, so it's where the left hand side of the road here meets the right hand side of the road. It goes to a little point. That is the limit point. Because when you make your approach, you've got to say to yourself, I have got to stop, I may have to stop at that particular point. Because just around that corner could have been an accident. You just don't know. Now, as you make your approach, what's going to happen at some stage is that limit point is going to move. But what's happening is as your road speed is getting slower and you're still reducing road speed, the limit point at the back of the curve, which first of all started to move slowly, is now beginning to speed up. So therefore, if you're getting slower and you reduce, by reducing road speed and the limit point is now beginning to speed up, there's got to come a time when the two match. We now have a corresponding amount of new road and new vision in the back of the curve. We can stop within the distance we can see to be clear. Whatever happens in that corner or curve, you have the ability to actually stop and stop safely. And now it's that time, and not before, change into the appropriate gear. You then drive around the curve, keeping an even, constant speed with the car in perfect balance. What I want to emphasize that this method of cornering isn't the fastest way to corner. It isn't the fastest physical way to corner. You could get around that bend at a much faster rate if you were using other methods. But all you're doing is compromising safety.